Okay, so uh, today we're diving into, um, well, it's a dream car that kind of turns into a nightmare. The Mercedes AMG GT brake recall. Yeah, so we were talking about, you know, the Mercedes AMG GT, which is, you know, kind of like the pinnacle of German engineering. Yeah. A car that can cost you as much as a house. Yeah. And it's facing a recall for something as, you know, fundamental and simple as its brakes. You think with a car like this, right. a recall would be, like you said, rare. Yeah. Like spotting a unicorn on the Autobahn. Exactly. Um, and the podcast, The Case, really dug into this. And it was fascinating stuff for those of you out there who are already familiar with the AMG GT. Mm. Let's, uh, let's see what new insights we can extract from this whole thing. So imagine this, you're pushing this beast of a machine to its limits on the track or wherever you happen to be feeling that raw power. And then you hit the brakes. Or you try to at least. Yeah, and that's that's where the problem is. We're not just talking about like a you know a little squeak or a slightly longer stopping distance. Right. This recall is centered around like a potentially catastrophic failure in the brake booster. Okay. Which is a critical component that most people probably don't even think about until it's too late. So let's unpack that a bit. What is a brake booster, right. and why is it such a big deal? So basically, um, think of it like this. You're trying to stop a speeding train by blowing on it. That's essentially the amount of force that you would need to generate to stop a car without a brake booster. Wow. It amplifies the force that you apply to the brake pedal, making it possible to stop these powerful vehicles efficiently. So it's not just about comfort. It's about having the actual stopping power needed. Exactly. Especially in a car that's designed for speed. Exactly. Now, the specific issue with the AMG GT seems to stem from a manufacturing fault okay. in a component within the brake booster. It's like a tiny part in a Swiss watch, you know, right. small, but absolutely crucial. Yeah. And when that tiny part fails, the consequences can be huge. The podcast mentioned something about like a fault in the manufacturing process. Yeah. But that feels vague for something so serious. Right. What details did they uncover? Yeah. So it seems like the issue um, comes from a specific batch of brake boosters where a critical internal component okay. wasn't manufactured to the correct specifications. Hmm. So imagine like a gear with teeth that don't quite mesh properly. Right. Over time, those gears are going to wear down and fail, yeah. leading to a loss of pressure and reduced braking power. So a seemingly minor flaw in manufacturing right. could lead to a terrifying loss of brakes at high speeds. I'm guessing that's why Mercedes took such swift action with this recall. Absolutely. Their response has been like a textbook example of how to handle a crisis effectively. Yeah. Not only did they issue the recall promptly, but they've also gone above and beyond to mitigate the impact on their customers. Offering free repairs is a given, but yeah. like providing loaner cars while those repairs are being done shows a real commitment to safety and customer satisfaction. Yeah, it makes you wonder, though, about the damage to their reputation. Yeah. We're talking about Mercedes-Benz. Right. A brand synonymous with luxury. Of course. And precision engineering. Yeah. A recall like this has to sting a bit. It does. And the Kinesor made a really interesting point about this. Okay. In the short term, sure, any recall can kind of dent a brand's image, yeah. especially one involving safety. But here's the thing. How a company handles the situation can actually strengthen trust in the long run. Okay. By taking immediate action, being transparent about the issue, and going the extra mile for their customers. Right. Mercedes is demonstrating a commitment to making things right. It's like they say, it's not about never making a mistake. Yeah. It's about how you recover from it. Right. But this whole situation does raise some bigger questions about the increasingly complex world of car manufacturing. We're talking about vehicles that are essentially computers on wheels now mm -hmm. with countless components, intricate software, all working together in perfect harmony. How do you even begin to ensure quality control in that kind of environment? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And it's something that the podcast touched on as well oh, as that. cars become more technologically advanced. Right. The potential points of failure multiply exponentially. And we're not just talking about the manufacturers themselves. The, right. the supply chain for modern vehicles is incredibly complex with parts and systems often sourced from multiple third-party suppliers. So you've got this like intricate web of suppliers, right. each responsible for a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And any weak link in that chain can have some major consequences. It makes you wonder, are these incredibly complex, high-performance machines, right. are they becoming almost too complex to guarantee safety? Yeah, it's a valid concern. And, um, you know, the Casio pointed out a really interesting parallel. 
Remember the Boeing 737 MX issues? Oh, yeah. While it's a different industry altogether. Right. It highlights what can happen when complexity kind of outpaces our ability to manage it. Yeah. With cars becoming increasingly reliant on software sensors, automated systems. Right. The potential for unforeseen interactions and glitches grows exponentially. So where does that leave us? Do we need to, like, pump the brakes, so to speak, on this relentless drive for innovation in the automotive industry? Well, that's the big question, and there are no easy answers. Right. On one hand, technological advancements have made cars significantly safer over the years, yes. with features like lane assist, automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, right. all contributing to accident reduction. But as this Mercedes recall shows, even the most advanced systems right. can have vulnerabilities. Yeah. It's a balancing act then. Yeah. Pushing the boundaries of what's possible while still making sure that safety and reliability are still important. Exactly. And it places a huge responsibility not only on the car manufacturers themselves, right. but also on regulatory bodies and consumers. Oh, yeah. We need robust oversight to ensure that these new technologies are rigorously tested and that safety standards keep pace with innovation. And as consumers, we can't just blindly trust that the latest and greatest features are flawless. We need to stay informed, understand the limitations of these systems, yeah. and demand transparency from manufacturers. Absolutely. Informed consumers are a powerful force for driving positive change. Yeah. This Mercedes-AMG GT brake recall, while concerning, yeah. serves as a valuable reminder of the complexities we face in this age of automotive advancement. It's a reminder that even dream cars can have their flaws and that vigilance and critical thinking are important whether you're behind the wheel of a high-performance sports car or a trusty family sedan. So as you slide into the driver's seat today, consider this. How much do you really know about the technology that's propelling you down the road? And what questions should you be asking to ensure a safe and enjoyable journey? That's something to ponder as we wrap up this deep dive.